the link between diabetes and cardiovascular disease is is related to uh, diabetes although it is a metabolic disease its consequences are actually related to the uh, to vessels to blood vessels so although diabetes is related to the fact that your body cannot use your blood sugars properly because of the lack of insulin or the inability for, uh, to use your insulin properly the consequences of that metabolic disease are actually down to uh, vascular problems um, now these present themselves in uh, such a way that most commonly within the eyes, the kidneys and the feet. And in those we call uh, microvascular complications, which essentially means the small vessels. And in these organs, those small vessels become furred up uh, and it causes dysfunction in those uh, organs such as kidney failure, the loss of sight and, and actually the inability to feel your feet, which can ultimately give you diabetic foot ulcers. So those are the more common uh, problems that we that we see um, uh, and the ones that, that people concentrate on, but actually they're vascular problems. And in the large vessels of the, of the uh, body, where the same process happens. So when those uh, blood vessels become furred up and don't work properly, uh, that particularly affects the heart and the brain, which presents itself in uh, heart attacks or strokes, which is what we commonly know as cardiovascular disease. Uh, and diabetes causes these these problems uh, in the same way as it does in is the same way as these problems occur in people without diabetes. So unfortunately, cardiovascular disease and strokes are quite common even in people that don't have diabetes. Um, and the process that's happening there is is that the arteries fur up. They, they fill with cholesterol and other inflammatory particles uh, and also they lose their ability to move and, uh, and flex with, uh, with all the stresses and strains that they go through. And that's actually a really important um, element to keeping your blood vessels healthy. So they age very quickly. Um, in diabetes, that process is sped up. It is the same process, but it happens much faster. So that's why diabetes has such a big impact uh, and causes cardiovascular disease at an early age. Uh, unfortunately, uh, cardiovascular disease is, is still the reason that most of our people with diabetes die, which we are obviously trying to fight against into the future. So the, the symptoms that you have of, of, of diabetic heart disease are the same as everybody else's really. So often they present with pain in the chest that goes up into the neck uh, and sometimes into the arm. Uh, and that can particularly be brought about by exercise. It can sometimes be presented itself just as shortness of breath um, and also occasionally as palpitations. There is such a concept as uh, of uh, a silent heart attack. Uh, this is something that specifically happens in diabetes. It, thankfully, it's quite rare, but as it says on the tin, really, that, that is a, it is a heart attack without any pain. So some people can just present sometimes several days later with either some palpitations or some hot, uh, shortness of breath. Uh, and then it is picked up on some of the tests that we do that there was a heart attack in, in the recent past but it's actually difficult for patients to pick up, but also difficult for, for uh, doctors to pick up too. Th there are some treatments for uh, cardiovascular disease and diabetes, and, and again, those treatments are very similar in diabetes to those people who don't have diabetes. So if you were unfortunate to have established heart disease, so in other words, you had a heart attack uh, or were suffering from angina, there are stents that we can put in the coronary arteries, which keep those coronary arteries open and stop them getting furred up or, or certainly slow that process down um, and hopefully prevent any further heart attacks in the future. And we can use those in diabetes patients in the same way. We can also use uh, medications which thin the blood down slightly to try and prevent there being any blood clots in the in the heart vessels, which are essentially what exactly what a heart attack is. Um, and we can also uh, use things like ACE inhibitors and beta blockers, which also help the heart beat more effectively should it be damaged by a heart attack. So there are some treatments for, for uh, uh, cardiovascular disease in diabetes, but we would much, pre much prefer to prevent, diabetes, prevent cardiovascular disease in the first place, and then we wouldn't have to use those medications. We're also lucky at the moment is that quite a few of the newer medications that are coming out for diabetes also have some real beneficial effects in those people that have got established heart disease. So 
uh, the gliflozins, low empagliflozin, adapagliflozin, those sorts of medications treat diabetes, but also help protect the heart against damage, which is which is obviously a good thing. So we kill two birds with one stone in those. And also the GLP-1 agonists, um, which are an injection uh, that are often uh, called things like liraglutide or duaglutide or semaglutide, anything ending in glutide. They're again medications that have been proven to be helpful to um uh, to those people that have got established heart disease so we have increasing amounts in our armory to help people uh, keep away from cardiac disease in the future what we'd rather do is prevent it in the first place uh, and, and when you go through your reviews what we will do is uh, often concentrate on your blood sugars which will help particularly with the microvascular disease so particularly with the eyes the kidneys and the feet that we talked about earlier and it will also help a little bit in reducing your risk of heart attacks and strokes in the future if you do have diabetes but we'll also spend some time in those reviews looking at things like blood pressure so keeping your blood pressure down to a sensible level because we know that that has a real impact on your risk of heart attacks and strokes in the future uh, and we'll also spend some time looking at the cholesterol so trying to get the cholesterol down to sensible levels often using statin medications uh, to try and bring those down and help protect those cardio th those blood vessels that, that cause the cardiovascular disease in the first place statins have their uh, have their worries about them and there have been some uh, some bad press about them but i think in diabetes they've been a game changer and the reason that we still have people uh, with diabetes living into a, uh, into a later age is largely down to the statins and, and their ability to prevent cardiovascular disease in the future. So I think in terms of diabetes, statins are a real step forward and a real helpful thing to use. They bring the cholesterol down, but they also change some of those things we talked about in the blood vessel wall uh, to help prevent cardiovascular disease in the future. So it's definitely worth preventing cardiovascular disease rather than treating it when it happens.